Thanks for staying with us now. The International Day of Persons Living with Disabilities is annually observed on the 3rd of December to promote the full and equal participation of persons with disabilities and to take action for the inclusions of persons with disabilities in all aspects of the society and development. And this year, the theme for this year is Building Back Better Towards a Disability Inclusive accessible and sustainable post-COVID-19 world. Now, Kelechi Ugwegu is a makeup artist, a lab scientist, a poet, a presenter, a speaker, actress, swimmer, shooter, hmm, footballer, I mean basketballer rather, philanthropist, who is the founder of Kelechi Uhegwe um, Charity, and she is a person living with disabilities, and she's joined us this evening. Hello, Kelechi. I hope I didn't murder your surname. <laughs> Hello, Kelechi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> it's my pleasure. All right, so because today is a very special day, you know, it's, um, it's dedicated to persons living with disabilities and all of that. I mean, like yeah. Uti was oh, yeah. saying when we were having the banter um, earlier on as to how in other climes, you know, People living with disabilities is so easy for them to, you know, to navigate, to go around. In Nigeria, it's, it's quite tough. But I know that there's been some kinds of effort, you know, by the government. But, you know, maybe you should just give us like a breakdown. How has it been, you know, or how is it like in, in, in Nigeria? And again, because of the theme for this year that has been linked to COVID-19, what was it like during the lockdown, you know, living with disabilities? Okay, um, I'll start with accessibility. Accessibility is a serious problem for people like us who use the wheelchair. You get to be reminded every time that you're physically challenged or disabled, if I'll use the word right now, when you're trying to board a plane, you're trying to gain access to hospitals, you're trying to go to even club, you have to have fun, you want to go to certain churches, you... We want to go to certain malls everywhere most places you go to they get to remind you although in lagos because i'm a traveler in lagos the system is a bit better there for people like us accessibility is a bit better but in other states in the country it's a very horrible experience that one gets to be reminded that there are many things you cannot do for yourself so um that's it basically so every time I'm forced to express myself, when I go to places where I expect that accessibility shouldn't be an issue, especially public places. So every time I'm talking to airlines, they, they hardly have certain provisions, even though they call people to come give us a helping hand, but that's where it ends. There are many other factors. You can't board, when you get to the foot of the plane, you can't climb up. And for me, um, I cannot even move at all with my legs. It's not like I can get up a bit, so I need to be carried. And it doesn't feel good to be carried as an adult, you know. And then you go to certain malls, apart from the newest um, um, malls these days, you you can't have access to them. Um, where? Like, every every time we get to, then of course, lose as well. You want to go take a leak in supposed public places. They don't have the type that people like us with our body orientation can use. Okay. So that's it. Wow. Then for the COVID-19, mm, it's effect on us. Uh, well, I don't even know where to start from, but um, this is it. Accessibility to wash our hands. For instance, um, um, what's it called? Many of the structures that were built where we could just wash our hands easily and maybe use the hand sanitizer, they, is, they really do not think about us, mm. why they were building these things. Like a few places had where you could step on something and then the water starts gushing Running, out. Yes. So for people like us, our legs can't step on such things mm. for the water to come up. Then where people keep their um, hand sanitizer, where you have to press, our hands can get to such places, unfortunately. And um, so I'm just talking about the hygiene part now for COVID-19. So for um, job opportunities, of course, people like us who do makeup as well, we don't um, 
get jobs as usual since we are trying to avoid the face-to-face -face contact. You know, it's no longer like before. I also do public speaking. So most of, I mean, public speaking in places where we have to meet people one-on-one, -on -one, you know, but wow. these days people, are, people hardly gather. Absolutely. Even though we get to do all these virtual... Well, we meetings, thank God for technology because COVID-19, you can yeah. actually use technology to project your public speaking um, um, because you do so many things. You do so many things. I was really impressed. Oh, when, yeah. yeah. Let me <laughs> call no, on Uti and... That um, should be one of the ways to cope, huh? Yeah. <laughs> let me call on Uti mm. and Mori if you have a question before we let um, Kelechi go. Um, okay. So I just wanted to, hi Kelechi, um, it would be interesting hi. to understand, um, like you said, you talked about the hygiene um, issues, but just even in terms of during the lockdown, what kind of support did you have in terms of maybe getting your foodstuffs and things like that? Okay, well, um, apart from the um, personal troubles I had with, with private people, I didn't feel good as a Nigerian citizen because obviously we were not exactly considered. But what I did personally was to reach out to friends who seemed to be uh, more financially stable. So they reached out to me and they were able to send money for me to take care of my personal needs, especially food stuff. Okay. So why did I had to share part of the money I got to reach out to other people who live with disabilities like me? And then um, from there, I was able to get a network of more people who, dis who um, got involved to see that we were taken care of. You get the point. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. But That's fantastic. The government on their part, we, we all felt like vegetables. Wow. You know, like I said, the disability is one. The society itself adding to the problem is worse off. Mm. Mm. All right. Maury? Yes. So um, all of this really, you know, sounds draining, you know, and really, I just want to know how do you find the strength to just go through, you know, the day-to-day -day activities to just, you know, keep pushing and saying, oh, I'm not going to give up because this alone is enough to, you know, make a person um, feel some type of way. Yes, of course. Uh, naturally, one is supposed to really feel drained emotionally mentally you know so we, we end up trying the society even tries to make us sad even for a few of us who are able to come out but um how i help myself i'm happy the day will still go by okay so it's really not easy but i try to look at the bright side of things many times okay okay so that's I, I was gonna say it's because a today, today so we are happy. Okay. Kalechi, today Hello? we are having a conversation around um, the rise of um, street beggars, you know, in Lagos. You know, when okay. you see people like you that are maybe on a wheelchair and all of that, and all they can think about is going on the streets to go and beg, how does that make you feel? Well, <laughs> I, I feel very bad for them. I also feel very bad for myself as well because you can't pour from an empty cup. So what I do is to speak where I can, like this platform now. We enlighten the public. We hope the government gets to hear me, see how we can help people on the streets. But it starts basically from even having a system that works. The system that works has a census of the number of citizens who live in the country, the number of citizens who live with a physical disability, so if we have the census or no total number of people who are going through, who live with a disability, basically, we would know, I mean, governments would know what to do next if our government really considers us as humans. But the, like I used to say, generally, the government doesn't even think about its citizens because things have to work for the general citizens before they even work for us. For instance, the, the walkways, if the roads are not good, how are they going to fix a walkway for people like us? Mm -hmm. You see? So the whole, I feel bad that um, those people on the streets are, um, are not properly taken care of and they had to. Oh. Mm. Okay, thank you so much, Kelechi. We would Kelechi, have to let you. That as a last. Oh, okay. I think we're having trouble with her network. Well, we'll have to let you go. Thank you so much. It was really important that we um, celebrated 
um, this day and, and just to hear, you know, from someone that is living in it. Because it's one thing for you to just see it and talk about it, but it's when somebody that is living with this challenge comes up to say it, you know, you can actually say it from a place of experience. So thank you so much, Kelechi, for joining us. It's all right. Thank All right, you so for we'll take. Me. Thank, thank you. Me. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation and we'll have our second guest with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.